important tips for IELTS speaking. We must know the strategies that we need to employ in the speaking exam so that we can get the band score that we need. So understanding these strategies is very critical because when you apply them, you get them the band score that you need, you get enough marks from the examiner and the examiner will just be giving you marks. So these strategies are the ones that we want to look at in this lesson. Remember, we have discussed other aspects of right, uh, speaking in the other videos which you can watch. Now let's just go to directly to the mistakes that you need to avoid because people have made these mistakes before. And when you make these mistakes, you lose marks. So um, I need to tell you that when you're starting the speaking exam, your 100% marks are intact. In terms of fluency and coherence, in terms of lexical resource, in terms of pronunciation, in terms of grammatical range and accuracy. So the moment you start making mistakes, then the examiner starts deducting marks. So we want to look at these mistakes so that we can avoid them when you're doing your speaking. So the first mistake is that some people are very brief in their conversations. Don't be too brief when answering questions. Now, when you give answers without expanding them, you will cut short your interview, you will cut short your conversation, you will cut short your speaking exam, which should take between 11 to 14 minutes. So the problem of brevity is a major issue that we have been observing in students. And you need to practice enough so that when you go to that exam, you are not brief. Let me give you an example. This is an example question. The question asks, do you live in a house or an apartment? Now, a person who says, I live in a house, that is a very brief answer. It is like a monosyllabic answer. And it will not garner you marks. Even if it is true that you live in a, in a house, you will not get marks for that. Because the question is about whether indeed you live in a house or an apartment. This is a speaking exam where you are supposed to speak. So you are supposed to make a statement. You are supposed to do a paragraph to answer that question. And a good answer could be something like this. Do you live in a house or an apartment? Currently, I live in a house, which is a standalone house, a four-bedroom uh, house with a garden. I used to live in a, an apartment, but I didn't enjoy it because of the noise uh, that emanated from some of my neighbors. I felt that it was kind of congested, even though I could be able to view the city from my fourth floor apartment. While living in a house, I enjoy a garden and I am able to uh, have a pet and my children can play in the garden. Something like that. That is just a simple answer, uh, which is not recorded, but at least it is expanded. So we are talking about expanding your answers, having them in paragraphs, not having them in very short sentences, and then you think that you will get it max. You will not get the max. Not being prepared. This is a mistake. And we have people who have lost their money. You go do an exam of uh, 29,000, that is IELTS general or uh, IELTS academic. Almost that thousand goes down the drain because you are not prepared. I say, I want to say here that even if you don't have money to pay a trainer or you don't, you are not willing to pay a trainer, look for a friend who has done IELTS and who is willing to take you through so that they can be your partner. They will be asking you questions and telling you how you are answering those questions before you go to do your exam. So because if you go to do your exam having not prepared, my friend, you are not going to get the required band score unless you are very smart in terms of speaking. You are very good in terms of... There are people who are just talented in speaking. Those ones may not need to do um, the kind of practice I'm talking about. But not everyone is talented in speaking. So if you know, since you know yourself, you need to 
ask yourself, are you going to get that band score without practice? If you know you are not going to get that band score without practice, then you need to look for someone to help you with the practice so that you can garner the required marks. Now, lack of confidence is a mistake that people do. And the only way you can improve your confidence is do by doing practice. Um, when you have confidence, it means that you will not be shaking when you are answering questions. And therefore, your pronunciation cannot be affected. Also, when you are confident, you will be able to think fast. And you will be able to generate ideas that are needed for you to answer the questions. Don't give monosyllabic answers. When they ask you a question, you cannot say yes, no, and then you think that you have answered the question. You must answer the question with a paragraph. You must give a comprehensive statement for any question. Even if the question is framed in such a way that it can be answered uh, using mono, mono, in, with monosyllabic uh, kind of answers, you cannot use monosyllabic answers in IELTS because you are going to fail. Now, going off topic is a uh, concern also, even though we are saying that you need to expand your answers, you need to expand your answers within the topic. You cannot go out of topic, then you tell us that you, know, you are trying to expand your answers. That is not allowed. So you need to expand your answers within the given topic because it is possible and other people have done it, so why not you? Don't remain silent uh, whenever you ask any question, even if you don't know how to answer that question. You need to come up with a way of answering that question. You need to generate ideas. And that is why I'm saying that practicing is very important because when you are practicing, you will be able to know how to generate ideas, even for a topic that you're not sure of a lot. Now, repeating the same word, repeating the same sentence, repeating the same phrase, repeating similes, repeating anything, Repetition is not encouraged in IELTS speaking. It is not encouraged in IELTS writing. So you need to avoid repetition as much as possible. That's why you need to have a good uh, base of IELTS vocabulary resources that you can use when you are doing your speaking. Memorizing answers is also a problem. Do not memorize answers because your exam will be unique. There is no other person who is doing your exam. You are the only person that exists who is like you in the whole, whole world. So even if you guys are asked the same questions, your answers cannot be the same. So you cannot memorize answers. And the moment examiners realize that you have memorized answers from somewhere, they can even disqualify you from the exam and they can, or they can cancel your exam because cheating is not allowed in I E L T S. So it is very important that you be prepared and you be original, authentic in your ideas and you give ideas that have not been given by someone else. I mean, you are natural enough and original. Now, after avoiding those uh, mistakes, you also need to accompany with uh, these tips, which are very critical again in this exam. Now, you need to avoid the temptation to use unfamiliar words. Do not look for very complex words and store them for use during the day of the exam because you may not be understanding exactly what they mean. Uh, sometimes maybe the examiner may not be very familiar with complicated words. So we do not want you to use complicated words. We want you to use simple, accurate English. Simple, accurate English. Words that you are familiar with, words that you have been using. Remember the IELTS exam uh, does not test um, uh, complex English. It tests how well you can use English, and, and that is simple but accurate. English vocabulary, you need to familiarize with a, a world of English vocabulary because you're, you're going to be uh, awarded marks for vocabulary. So the, the more you, the, the better vocabulary you have, the more vocabulary you have, the better, because when you're using the right words to describe the right uh, thing that you're describing, then you get marks for that. You when you use wrong vocabulary, you lose marks. So it is important that you consider that. Um, about memorizing answers, I've talked about that. Varying your sentences. Uh, when you are starting sentences, you need to vary them. Some people have a tendency of repeating themselves, saying, uh, for example, when you ask a question, whenever you want to answer, you say, well, uh, that's a good question. 
uh, something like that. It's not bad, but you cannot keep on repeating the same thing. You need to vary your starting uh, parts so that you do not uh, bore the examiner. Now, can you pause when you are doing IELTS speaking exam? Yes, you can pause to think. You can pause to organize your ideas, but do not pause for too long. Because if you pause for too long, the examiner will not be sure whether you are organizing your ideas or you don't have anything to say. And they may be tempted to interrupt you, therefore interrupt your thought processes and the idea you are generating uh, may fade away and you may lose marks for that question. So that's why we are saying you need to do a lot of practice so that you can be a fast thinker. Uh, not okay to use fillers. Yes, do not use fillers. Do not use... Um, uh, just construct uh, to contract long sentences just for the sake of constructing long sentences. There are people who will use any words, irrelevant words, just to remain um, in a talking mood or for them to expand their answers. And the moment you do that, you will have a tendency of going off topic or you will have a tendency of talking a lot but saying nothing as related to the topic. So you lose marks. Again, there are some people who have a tendency of using uh, such words such as um, uh, I want to say uh, so that is bad. You are not supposed to do that. As much as possible, try to limit. Uh, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a problem with many people but it's possible to avoid it by doing a lot of practice. Extend your answers as necessary. This is the same as uh, where we talked about not being brief because when you are not doing that, when you are not expanding your answers, then you can be sure that you are going to lose marks. Can you smile? Yes, you can smile as you give your answers because you are doing a conversation with the examiner. So you don't want to be very frowny uh, to the examiner. You want to smile and set your, your lips in such a way that you're able to pronounce words well because you will be given marks for pronunciation. So when you're pronouncing words in such a way that the examiner cannot hear exactly what you are saying or you cannot uh, put uh, stress and intonation in, at the right places in the words, then you are going to lose marks for pronunciation. So... That's the end of this presentation. I want to ask you that if you have any questions, do not fail to send them to us via the comments section. And this presentation has been brought to you courtesy of Passcode Global Consultants. We do teach IELTS, both general and academic. And when you need any assistance, do not uh, hesitate to get to us and we are going to help you with it. Until we meet in the next video, I want to wish you the very best.